Welcome back my fellow gamers. Today I've got a review of What the fuck's this? Oh, Crash. Crash. Crash is back. Crash is back. I gotta go tell everyone. Crash is back, crash is back, crash is back, crash is back, crash is back. I'm back! Crash is back, folks. There has never been a better time to be alive on this sweet, sweet, sweet green planet of ours, Earth. Crash is back. I know I'm most likely late for this. I'm sure there's so many reviews. I mean, at this point, I've actually watched quite a few reviews, such as uh, Cat Icarus, Some Call Me Johnny, people like that, and some other people that I've, uh, some other, other like, less uh, popular channels that I've watched you reviewed this game and I grew up like with many of you I know a lot of you are actually quite new to Crash Bandicoot so this is your first time experiencing it if you're playing the Insane Trilogy now unfortunately I don't have the original game of Crash Bandicoot the first game I have it on PSN the digital copy unfortunately I lost my copy and I've been desperately trying to find um, a physical copy of the originals uh, you know, to go with my Crash 2 and Crash 3. Same with CTR, I don't have the physical copy anymore, I only have the digital copy. I do have Crash Bash, but considering this is mainly, obviously, the trilogy, I thought it makes sense to bring these two out, so I have the original copies right here. And this time, it's Vicarious Visions, of course it's not Naughty Dog, because Naughty Dog moved on from Crash some years back. Um, and Activision now owns Crash and so we weren't sure you know who was going to work on it and then we heard Vicarious and they are uh, known to work on Crash before such as uh, Crash Nitro Car which I played and I think it's like the lesser version of Team Racing um, and they've also done the Game Boy Advance games which unfortunately I've never had the experience of trying out because I never had a Game Boy Advance I didn't have any Nintendo consoles growing up I was, I was purely Mega Drive and Sony and then I eventually got a GameCube myself when I was older and I could actually afford my own money and I wasn't you know screaming at my parents being like please 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 give me another games console please so with that said Vicarious Visions has taken the helm can they make these games as great as they were I mean, that's the thing. Crash is back, or should I say he's gone back to his roots. It's the original games. Crash Bandicoot 1, Crash Bandicoot 2, Cortex Strikes Back, and Crash Bandicoot War. Without further ado, guys, this is gonna be my first review on this channel, actually, so hopefully this turns out all right, and I hope you guys enjoy and join me for the crazy, insane ride. It's Crash Bandicoot. Let's do it. I'm going to break down my opinions on each game, then my overall thoughts and changes across all three games. In my reviews, I cover graphics, gameplay and music, GGM. So without further ado, let's start with the graphics. I can't help it. It's so beautiful. All three games look amazing. The vibrant colours and the lighting in the game really improves the visuals. Well, at least for most, I do feel like some light don't really fit well with Crash. Like some of the reflections makes his fur look a bit funny as well as Coco. But for the most part, most levels just look utterly amazing, astonishing even. The colours for some levels have been altered as well, such as like the high time, the hang them out levels, for more of a lighting effect as opposed to just a straight out colour effect. So rather than say it just looks completely yellow or completely blue, it actually has more of a blue moonlight reflect which looks more accurate to what they're actually going for. The visuals even help out in the night level of Crash Bandicoot 2 so you can actually see where you're going a little bit easier so you don't have to worry about the Firefly making them much easier to deal with. Crash and Coco's models are in 4K! I have no idea what that means honestly but... My exclusive 4K TV.
beautiful, beautiful 3K. I actually uh, got this before anyone else. This is going to be released for 999 3K pounds, 3K pounds, soon to be released nowhere. Uh, Coco likes it, I think. The amount of detail in recreating the cutscenes is simply astonishing. Vicarious Visions did all of this from the ground up, recreating pretty much close to the originals while improving some things. Gameplay. Crash controls the same throughout all games. He controls close to 2 and 3, which is, which is great for those games. However, it doesn't quite work for Crash 1. Don't get me wrong, it's not terrible. I would even go to say that, for the most part, I do think the control does benefit, especially for new players, uh, to Crash Bandicoot 1 as opposed to the stiff control for Crash Bandicoot 1. But the thing is, in Crash Bandicoot 1, the stiff control was kind of programmed around that, that control. I think for the new players, it's not as bad, but for the old players such as myself, it definitely throws you off. It makes levels like Road to Nowhere and High Road even more frustrating than they were. But not only that, it's been stated that they are using a pill-like collision for Crash and Coco. What this means is that, that the collision is actually not straight out flat and that they slip off at times. This can be a good thing or a bad thing. The good is that if timed right, you can actually use this to jump a little bit further. It's actually a bit of a speed up technique, I suppose, to uh, push you a little bit further. The bad is that it makes Precision's platforming even harder. Crash 1 was already hard enough as it is with Precision platforming, and now they're doing this. So, yeah. But past Crash 1, the controls are pretty solid, honestly, and complements 2 and 3 very well. Music. Overall, I did enjoy the soundtrack, but I do have to admit there are some ones that are just not as good as the original in my personal opinion. And can I just say, what on earth did they do to the polar levels? It's like Rayman Origins got a hold of it or something. However, Dingo Dial's theme? Mate, I think that might be my favourite track. All in all, Crash Bandicoot always had a variety of different themed music tracks, and to be honest in this version it's no exception, however, I get the feeling that for a lot of tracks they liked Guitar Hero or something. That's not the entire soundtrack of course, but a good chunk of it. Now to move on to each games separately. Crash 1 is, well for all players, it's as challenging as we know it. It's hard, no doubt about it. Dark Souls hard? Come on man, don't even joke like that. You just need to get good. Fight me IRL. But the one thing, the one thing that they did to make this game so much better, you wanna know what it is? Psst, psst. Get closer, get closer to the screen, guys. Listen up, alright? You can die. Yeah, you can die! You're already thinking, what the hell am I on about? Am I on something? No. This should have been the tagline of the game. Psst, psst. Hey, guess what? 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 Huh? Huh? You want to know what, Wiz? I'm starting to tell you. Something really important. You can die. Yeah, what a weird thing to say, eh? You can die? Let's be clear, this counts for the clear gems. In the original it was frustrating because you actually had to not 
die and collect all of the boxes in order to get the gem. Otherwise, it wouldn't even take you to the screen where you get the gem. Crash would just sigh of relief, rubbing his face and then just teleport to the next level. So you had to start the level again and basically go through it without dying. That was infuriating. A challenge, but still pretty infuriating for a kid's game. And even today, like for adult players, it's it's ridiculous. It's ridiculously hard. Thank God they changed it for the new games. And thank God Virate Care's Visions changed it here. They changed that for the clear gems, making it more friendly to players. But for those who like the challenge, I mean, the color gems you still cannot die on. So, you know, levels like Slippery Climb and this level, Lab, are still 100% bull. In addition, all bonuses are now mandatory for box counts. Did you ignore the Brio bonuses before? Well, if you want to complete the game 100% now, you won't. And now you don't do the Tourna levels just to save the game. Because we can save the game anytime we want. We have four slots and an autosave. That's amazing. Well freaking done, Vicarious Visions. This is how you do it. it. Even has the PS1 memory card. What a neat little detail to add. Speaking of Tourna, she had a more toned down down look in this game compared to her <clears throat> Jessica Rabbit look clearly and she would congratulate you in a bonus and just well kind of stand there like a showgirl thinking oh right weren't you captured by Cortex? In this version she gets kidnapped each time you meet her so I guess all the time she's escaping only for Cortex to be like huh no she'll leave you for pinstripe anyway poor Crash all the bosses are the same, except Papu Papu has more health this time around, and each have like a little boss ending detail after they are defeated. A nice little touch, I welcome it. And then there's Stormy Ascent, the new DLC level that was released a few weeks back from this recording. And <sighs> if you thought Crash 1 wasn't hard enough, this level. <sighs> the, I, I've played hard games before. I've never actually thrown the controller for Crash Bandicoot 1, at least I want to say. I might have done it when I was a kid. But this one, this level, I, who, oh, I really just, I really just didn't want to do this. I, I really, I, I, this level makes a grown man cry. I'm not kidding. Stormy Ascent is an unused level from the original. It was cut but because it was too hard. <laughs> too hard. In Crash 1. Are you serious? Super Climb was bad enough. Well, I mean, at least she can die. It's still yeah. hard though. And it's not mandatory for 100%. So I suppose there's that. It's optional. But if you want to get all the trophies like myself, then you're going to have to do it at some point. All in all, this version of Crash 1 is so much more friendly to players. It does throw off players like myself, but I think we just need time to adjust. Remember, Vicarious Visions created this themselves, not the source code. They didn't have the source code, they had to recreate this themselves. They did a bloody fine job. And they, you know, the changes that they did make for Crash Bandicoot 1, I definitely approve of. I welcome the changes. Sure, you know, sure you now have to do the bonuses, but you can retake them as many times as you need to, so that's not so bad. And it does not affect your gem if you die in them, so, you know, there's leniency a little bit, at least to that, you know? But let's be real. Underneath all that, it's still Crash 1. The hardest to free. So I won't blame you if people are skipping it. You know? How about we move on to a better game? At least see where it all started, you know? This is how his career got skyrocketed, and then we got Crash Bandicoot 2 Quarter Strokes back, and Crash Bandicoot 3. Whoa! <coughs> 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 Always hurts my throat when I try to do that. But if you had to choose any version of Crash Bandicoot 1, play this version. Alright? Thank me later. Crash Bandicoot 2 Cortex Strikes Back. Here we are with one of the better games. We get the slide jump and the slam, just like the original. 
God, I miss these. Barely controls, pretty good, I think. Um, maybe a little bit jumpy, but for the most part, I didn't have too much trouble. I hear some players have had troubles with it, like even like the veteran players, but I haven't really experienced that much issues like they have. Shame about the music, though. I mean, there's not really too much to say here. Vicarious Vision's done a pretty cracking job in recreating Crash Bandicoot 2, pretty much, you know, to the ground up. For the most part. The thing with 2 and 3 is that they didn't really need much improvement to, to begin with, you know? The first game needed significant changes, and Vicarious definitely delivered. If you enjoyed 2 before, I think you can enjoy it here. Unless you're a speedrunner, maybe not. Exploits that were in the original aren't here. You still do that sexy slide spin jump though. Oh baby. Cold Hard Crash is still a piece of shit yeah. though. Actually, it's more of a piece of shit yeah. here in this version. I didn't fix that. Did you? Vicarious Visions. A couple of things to note, I suppose, that I can mention though, is that the secret warp room, you can actually unlock this by finding one of the secret exits to get to the secret levels. Uh, and now, you can actually just, after that, you can just go to the warp room by going below the first warp room. So that's a nice little detail. Um, and they removed, I believe, a couple of projections, well, with, with the cortex projections talking to you. Um, and I believe they blurred out some lines as well. Um, because they changed it so that you actually go through a level portal, well, to get to the boss, as opposed to using the platform to get to the boss, which is what was like in the original. But other than that, it's still pretty much Crash Bandicoot 2 Cortex Strikes Back. So, enjoy! Crash Bandicoot Warped is my personal favourite of the three, and still my all-time favourite Crash Bandicoot game to date. People who's played the original will know. This is where Uka Uka, Aku Aku's twin brother, the mask that you get that takes a hit or gives you invisibility when you break the crate, gets introduced and the first time you hear Aku Aku being voiced. Two things. Uka Uka in the original, much more intimidating. And Aku Aku is voiced by the same actor who plays Grimm from the Grimm Adventures of Billy and Mandy. That's neat. I was naturally most excited to revisit this game, particularly in all its updated glory. But up till this point, I feel like I haven't said much bad for Crash 2 or 3. I mainly just harped on Crash Bandicoot 1 because that was the weakest of the three. So let's change that. I do have some things to say about Crash Bandicoot Warped. Oh my god. What did they do to the ski levels? The controls are worse in this version. I'm sorry, they just are. Makes it harder to be precise. You have to be more precise to get launched on the ramp. I never enjoyed these anyways. They are my least favorite vehicle levels. The motorcycle levels. This isn't necessarily a complaint, but I feel like it's a personal struggle, personally for all players, or maybe it's just me. I had so much trouble with the controls when I first played this. I'm so used to the control scheme of the original, it did take me a good while to adjust to the new controls. I literally couldn't complete Road Crash at first. When I streamed this game on the day of release, it took me several attempts. Several. That's never happened and that's just to win and get the crystal. I I just I don't understand. But again, I feel like it's just me. I had to adjust to this new control and I just I just couldn't. I literally just couldn't. I I literally I I, I don't understand. This also led to the relics being harder than the original, and I've also heard others have had the similar problem as me, so at least I feel like it's not just me, and that some old players are actually having the same problems as me, so that makes me feel not as bad. But again, I do feel like this is more of an old players thing, I just wanted to add that, so for new players, you probably didn't really affect you too much, you probably still had to get used to the controls, but, you know, you don't have the previous controls to really fall back on or to, or to compare like we do. However, the biplanes are actually really good, even better. I never thought they were bad to begin with. The range for the gun is better. You can see the targets much easier as well. Overall, a fun experience. Pero controls are pretty, pretty good as well. Slower in this version though. Well, that is until she dashes. For some reason, my god! She is so fast, she's dashing around like Usain Bolt or something. 
even though it's not the fastest man alive at the point of this recording. <laughs> also, this is not related to vehicles, but Dingo Dog. There's one line they didn't recreate. You thrashed me, mate. No worries, but you'll soon be up against much worse. Why? Why though? I don't... Does anyone actually know? Can, can someone tell me why? The, the one line that they, they didn't do that I remember and they didn't do it. I... Entropy's got his line. I... I just... Why? Why? I feel so alone. But again, I feel like that's my personal quirk. The relics in this now have a score. So you compare your times with other players. Speaking of relics, let's move on to the thoughts and changes of the game. The relics are now new additions added to Crash 1 and 2. Now in 2, not so bad. They even give you the running shoes from Crash Bandicoot Warped. However in 1... <sighs> get closer to the screen again guys. Guess what? Relics aren't designed for Crash Bandicoot 1. I'm going to be straight with you. Unless you're a completionist or just insane like me, don't go for the platinum, sorry. You only need the gold for the trophy, so do that if you want. My god, though, the relics in Crash 1 can go f yeah. themselves. I don't know why I did it. I guess I just like punishment growing up on hard games or something. But I mean, if you you want to and you haven't got the buttons at this point you can always check my guide shameless plug <laughs> at this point I have trophied all three games wow how am I still speaking to you guys right now but again if you're a casual player you don't even need to do these so you know you don't have to worry about it it's only if you wanted to complete the game fully and get all the trophies and yes that includes Stormy Ascent oh god it's a nice challenge, I guess. Yeah. No, that's just a load yeah. of sh Know who I haven't talked about? Coco. Crash's sister that was introduced in Crash Bandicoot 2 and was playable for the vehicle levels in Crash Bandicoot Warped. Well now, thanks for her messing with the time twister, in Warped she goes back in time to help her brother, making her playable in all three games. Unfortunately, she plays exactly the same, so it's just for aesthetics, really. But she has her own unique animations and idle animations. Can I just say, the animations in this game are superb. And if you stand Crash next to Coco and wait, they both do the Crash dance at the exact same time. That's so adorable. And she even giggles when Crash gets hit by his own Wampa Fruit or if he gets stuck with his yo-yo. Coco being playable means she no longer relegated to just the gimmick levels. She can do all that her brother does and play through the platform levels. Though, she can't take on bosses, which kind of sucks. All in all, still a cool addition to the games. Wait, wait, wait. I'm recording this on a different day because I totally forgot to add this in. But this, I have to get this off my chest. Now I'm going to be doing this for some of these reviews when needed. Rant mode activate. What the yeah. vicarious visions? What is going on with your yeah. fucking hitboxes in this yeah. fucking game? What's up with the flames in Native Fortress? What? Yeah. Then I jump on it, the flame hasn't even started, and I still get hit. What the yeah. is up with the Cortex boss fight? I jump over and dodge the lasers, and I still get hit. What? Is the bloody hitbox is the size of a fucking yeah. whale? What the yeah. Crash Bandicoot 2, I've never had so much trouble. What the hell is going on with the nitros? Sometimes I can just bloody not even touch it when I'm standing on the damn thing. What the hell? And other times I'll just randomly touch it for no reason or I swear they bounce like bloody crazy in this version of the game and they just clip me off and I can't even do anything about it because I don't know if I'm going to yeah. bounce up into my face. How am I supposed to predict that, huh? How am I supposed to predict that? What is up with the box? I swear I try and jump in the boxes, I slide off and the momentum pushes me off. Cold hard crash. Oh my yeah. god. 
I hate that level. Worst level in the game. I had an instance where I was jumping on a box, I was trying to send more momentum, and instead I like clipped the box and then I propelled off the edge of the ice. It's Robot Spider, crab enemies. I don't know what they are. I swear they are so yeah. picky about how you jump on them. Other times I will just slide into them when they haven't even got their their arms and their legs up. Their legs are down, yet I can slide into them sometimes. And other times I'm jumping on it, legs are down, I still get electrocuted. Rant deactivated. Final summary. Crash Bandicoot Insane Trilogy is a great way to play the original gems that started on the PlayStation 1. And would I recommend it over the originals? Yes, I would actually. Despite my nitpicks and problems, and I feel like I've been pretty lenient compared to a lot of other reviewers I've heard, I still think this is the version that you should get. If you played the originals growing up like me, you may want to still play them for nostalgic sake, the originals I mean, or in my case, I would just like to own a physical copy of them. As of this time, the Insane Trilogy is going for about £30 on Amazon, it was £27, but I guess with its huge success, they put the price up a tad, which is, well, not surprising. Speaking of huge success, they have already started talking about working on reviving other IPs with Crash's huge sales success. And even mentioning working on the Spyro trilogy on the PS1. Spyro! Yeah, Spyro the Dragon. I do believe he's coming back guys, so get hope for a possible Spyro remaster of the original three games. I'd be over the moon if they did this. But before that, they mentioned that they would like to go to CTR. My god! Can this just get any better? I would scream like a giddy child if this happened. If you like platformers, a fan of Crash, or just interested in a light-hearted cartoonish styled game, then give this game a try if you haven't before. Though I bet most of you at this point already have. If this is the first time you're experiencing these three magnificent gems, then for you guys, you probably will have a bit of a, say, difficult experience with the first game, but that's because the first game was always hard. That's just how it was designed. They improved on that with Crash Bandicoot 2 and Crash Bandicoot Warped, so those games are more user-friendly, but Crash Bandicoot 1 is there, so you can kind of see where it all began with the Orange Massupian, and then you can see where he progressed and improved significantly throughout the series. Now, people have already discussed things like, does this mean we're gonna get a CTR? Some people say Crash Bash. I kind of figured that it's going to be within the Naughty Dog era. You could argue the PS1 era, which Crash Bash was on the PS1 era, but it wasn't done by Naughty Dog. It was done by uh, Eurocom, I believe. Eurocom Entertainment Software. So that wasn't by Keras Visions either, but that was pretty much where Activision kind of took over around that time, was around, sort of around there I believe. But these, these two games have clearly exceeded expectations. They've talked about other IPs. This doesn't necessarily mean it's just relegated to platforms though, because, you know, Activision might think about other stuff that they've done that are actually not platformers. But overall, I do think that Crash Bandicoot Insane Trilogy is the definitive version that you should play. Now, if you're an old player like me, you might want to go back to the old games for like nostalgic sense, or if you just want to be really authentic and just play the originals. These two games, these three games, you should definitely get. Anyway, I've rambled on for long enough. If you've stayed throughout the whole video, Comment below, hashtag insane below to let me know that you have. And if you did enjoy the video, please leave a like because it really does help. This is my first review, so hopefully it turns out all right. Hopefully I haven't bored you too much. Whoa, whoa. Hopefully not. Hopefully you're stuck with me. Um, there'll be more reviews in the future. But I have been Jay from Reasons to Play. Be sure to stick around because I'll be doing more reviews and I'll be doing more uh, Reasons to Play episodes as well. Thank you so much my fellow gamers. I hope to see you guys 
next time. We didn't talk about how Crash is terribly like dogs, so... Oh, fuck off.